so today, um, Mistweavers received the most changes out of the monk class between Miss of Pindaria and Warlords of Draenor, the biggest of which is the inclusion of Stance of the Spirited Crane. Uh, do a, doing damage while healing, also known as fist weaving, has always been part of the monk design and of Mistweaver design, but this change has brought it into the spotlight. Rising Sun Kick has been added to the fist weaving rotation. This provides a damage buff and a strong single target hit and heal. We did not lose a lot in the ability pruning, but did have some notable losses, including Zen Meditation, Disable, and the ability to cast Healing Spheres. So we're going to go over a uh, kind of a simple rotation, what you guys should be looking at. Um, now, you can't look at Mistweaver anymore just with one simple rotation. You have to decide whether you're in Serpent Stance or in Crane Stance. So the first thing we're going to go over is Stance of the Wise Serpent. So for this, your whole point is to do as much healing output as you can. And the best way to do that is spread it on your raid using Renewing Mist on cooldown. Make sure the party or the raid is completely blanketed with as many of these as possible. There's a chance, which is equal to your multi-strike chance, that your renewing miss will not go on cooldown when used, allowing you to use it twice in a row. Uh, it's really useful to use a weak aura for this to trigger when you get that multi-strike proc, because otherwise you have no indication at all that that happened, uh, except for it's just not on cooldown. So having something popping up to tell you that is going to be extremely helpful. Uh, soothing Mist on your single target in order to speed up casting of Surging Mist. This is your primary chi generator and one of the biggest changes uh, between Mist of Pandaria healing and Warlord's healing. Because Surging Mist used to be extremely expensive and didn't do that much healing in Mist of Pandaria. But now it's kind of your primary. It's not that expensive, does a good chunk of healing, and generates chi. Uh, for single target healing, you're going to want to spend your chi on enveloping mist. When you're healing multiple targets, you want to spend your chi on uplift. So you use revival. This is one of your most powerful cooldowns. Uh, if there are any allies with magic, poison, or disease debuffs, or there are several targets nearing death. This has been buffed significantly in recent patches to the point where it will overheal drastically if you don't have everyone near death. It will almost full heal everybody can crit can multi-strike so um does a lot a lot of healing so this is a very powerful raid cooldown uh to be used another raid cooldown which has gotten buffed in recent patches just in recent hot fixes actually is called life cocoon this is a shield to the target that does about good chunk of healing and makes a huge absorb uh, it lets you take a lot of damage. It also has a buff on there that uh, as long as it's up, it increases your periodic healing. So Renewing Mist and uh, Soothing Mist, it will buff that by 50%. So this is extremely useful if uh, not only for the absorb, so you can really soak a huge hit that gets hit, but you can also turn around and buff your other heals to make it... Uh, to make them go back up. So in dungeons, this is extremely useful. You put on a tank that's near death and you can just pump them back to full with Soothing Mist and Surging Mist uh, really, really quickly. It's kind of your your lifesaver. And so that's kind of the basic rotation of Serpent Stance. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, we're gonna go on to Crane Stance. And uh, let's see, let me check Twitch here, make sure that everybody is good on Twitch. All right, cool. All right, so for Serpent Stance, what we're going to do is use Jab to generate Chi. This is, if you've played a Windwalker, this is going to sound pretty familiar. Uh, use Tiger Palm to apply the Tiger Power buff. Use it again when needed to maintain the buff, so we want to keep that up. Uh, that's going to make 30% uh, armor penetration happen, to, or ar armor ign uh, you ignore armor for 30%, which is nice. Use Rising Sun Kick to apply the damage debuff. This is going to boost your damage. Now, recently, just got nerfed like yesterday. Uh, now does a 10% damage to all of your abilities. Um, and like Renewing Mist, there's a chance that Rising Sun Kick will not go on cooldown when used. So use this liberally. Use, again, a weak aura if possible to keep that up. 
Blackout Kick is going to apply Crane Zeal, increasing your critical strike chance. Use again to, when needed to maintain this buff. So you've got three buffs you want to keep up. Tiger Power, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. And then there's another stacking buff you're going to get called Vital Mists. Every Chi you spend will give you a stack of Vital Mists. At five, you're going to cast Surging Mist because it's going to be free and instant. And there's a nice glyph that you can use in Crane Stance, which will make it just so you don't even have to pick a target. It's just going to do a smart heal and heal the most injured player, or a injured player, rather. Um, so when all of these buffs and debuffs are active, what you want to do is use Tiger Palm for single target heals. Um, and Blackout Kick for multiple target heals. And Rising Sun Kick for very large heals. So, well large in the relative sense of Mistweaver, actually. Uh, Crackling Jade Lightning. This one is an interesting thing in Crane Stance. Because, as we can see, watch my mana bar if you're watching on Twitch. I just sucked up about 20% of my mana. But notice my Chi. I went to 4 Chi almost instantaneously. So this is extremely useful for getting Chi really quick. It does a lot of damage, heals, uh, heals via Eminence, in a very short period of time gets you 4 chi but you're gonna go oom really fast if you do this so this is really good to use on the pole uh when you get get in you can get 4 chi and get your rising sun kick and blackout kick and tiger palm going um for both stances what you're going to do is make sure that your jade serpent statue is next to someone that is going to heal because I notice when i do range. soothing mist let me switch stances here it's going to beam and hit Soothing Mist to someone else at the same time. This is also extremely vitally important if you're doing Crane Stance, because any damage you do is going to turn into Eminence near your statue. So you need your statue up to get healing out of uh, Crane Stance. So the statue is one of the biggest things that people miss, because it's really easy to forget to put that down. So make sure you... you make darn sure you have that place somewhere close to other targets because it's a short range it's about 20 yards detox this is removes magic poison and disease effects from targets so that's going to be a standard for any healer you have to watch out for that using some sort of uh, add-on to keep track of that decursive is really popular uh, you can use that to clear those off rushing jade wind and spinning crane kick are great for aoe heals but Rushing Jade Wind in particular, extremely mana intensive. So uh, if you are running low on healers, if you're doing like a two heal strat for, uh, you know, for a 10 man or higher, then you probably want to avoid these, but they will do a lot of healing. Uh, so use them when possible. Okay, and that's, uh, that's about it for the basic rotation for Crane Stance and Serpent Stance. Are there any questions in Mumble? All right, so let's go over the stat priority. So this one, uh, Geodu, is a wonderful theory crafter. He hang hangs out a lot in MMO champion forums. He did a lot of uh, testing and a lot of explanation of why he picked these stat priorities. So let's go over these. Uh, this is what I use. Uh, Multi-Strike, that's going to be your number one. The throughput on that stat is great. It's also our uh, preferred stat. It's the one where we get an extra 5% uh, for every piece of Multi-Strike that we get. So get your Multi-Strike food, get your Multi-Strike uh, potions, things like that um, to, to boost that up. Crit is going to be your next one. Uh, crit is awesome, especially for um, Serpent Stance. It helps you get your Mana T stacks, which you're going to need. Versatility, all around good stat. Boost your damage in Crane Stance, boost your healing in Serpent Stance. Uh, also reduces the amount of damage you take in. So it's a good all around stat. Now, this one is a tricky one. Spirit is up next. This one's really tricky. We have less reliance on Spirit due to Mana T. However, we also have higher cost spells to balance that out. So the longer that you have to chug Mana T, however, is the longer you're out of commission. Chugging Mana T takes you out as you, as you chug it. So Spirit probably shouldn't be passed up on pieces you can get it. So even though it's lower in the priority toll, there are only a certain amount of pieces that you can get it on. Jewelry, uh, cloaks, weapons, those are the only places, and trinkets. Uh, these are the only places you can get Spirit, so take it if you can get it, because you're going to need it. Uh, we go oom not super fast, but fast enough, and so if you're oom a lot and chugging mana tea like crazy, you're going to be out of commission and not doing as much healing, and you could be down at a vital point. 
So next up are the two worst stats for us, haste and mastery. Haste is interesting because haste is actually our number two priority spell if we our stat if we have mana for it, but the problem is we don't. Uh, if you push haste, that's going to drop you down to like a one second global cooldown, and you'll be spamming spells like crazy, you're doing a ton of throughput, but then you're going to go oom like nobody's business. So it, you kind of lower it down in the totem pole and favor you getting more effect out of the mana you have versus going through mana faster. Now, mastery... <sighs> Mastery has so much potential. They made some changes. They made it so uh, the balls will explode and do most of its healing um, after a few seconds and will hit a wider area. Plus, uh, we have a new ability called Detonate Chi, which will take all the healing spheres that are around and burst them all at the same time and do full healing. So it sounds awesome, and it sounds like, wow, I could really do some cool stuff with Mastery, but... The scaling on it is so bad in terms of what I mean by scaling is when you uh, cast a spell, you have a certain percent chance to pop a sphere. And you'd think this would be based just off our mastery percentage, but it's different on every single spell we have. And so the theory crafters have gone in, figured out what the what the proc rates are, the scaling rates, and even if we assume, which is never going to happen, but let's say a hundred percent pickup. Every single sphere you get, one of your raid members walks over top of it. Stop laughing, guys. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Let's just assume that happens. It's still less than versatility in terms of our stat weights. So we assume it's going to be more like about... Well, Blizzard says it's they assume about 85 to 90%. And that drops it even lower. In reality, we're seeing more like 50, 60 percent. If your rate team is really awesome, then you might want to take it over versatility, maybe, and maybe over haste. But I would advise just if you ha can avoid uh, mastery, just avoid it. The problem is high mall, mo like four or five of our best in slot pieces have mastery on it, so you're going to see those little green balls everywhere. So let's talk about detonate chi then. Since we're going to have these green balls everywhere, we might as well use them. So Detonate Chi sounds like it'd be completely cool uh, to use, like, okay, I need to do a burst of, burst of healing right now. Let's detonate all these balls. Only try to use this if you're moving. If uh, your team has to move from this section to this section of the map, that's when you want to hit it because then those balls are going to be useless. If you're stacked up, those are going to burst anyways after a certain amount of time. So you're going to have kind of this constant rolling Gift of the Serpent going on. So you don't really want to use Detonate unless A, it's an emergency, or B, you're moving. So it, the heal it gives is not so good that it's going to be like a cooldown. So only kind of use it if you move. All right, and that really does it for stat priority. Any uh, any questions on those? The, the, those ones are kind of the tricky ones. So if anyone has any questions on stat priority, let me know. Quiet mumble group today. I'm hoping that you can hear me. No one's left yet, so I'm guessing. All right. Uh, glyphs. We're going to talk about glyphs now. So there's four main ones that you want to be using. There is uh, Detox. This one gives Detox two charges but higher cooldown. So this is going to be dependent on the fight, of course. So whether or not you have a... I don't even have this learned yet, and I'm an inscriptionist. I have no excuse. Uh, detox is a maximum of two charges, but cooldowns increase by four seconds. So if you have a fight with a lot and lot and lot of decursing going out, you may want to use this, um, especially if it's burst. So something like the... Uh, the Fallen Protectors, that kind of fight. If there's something like that, this would be a good time to use it. Uh, the other ones are Renewing Mist. This one should be in every Mistweaver's repertoire. Uh, Glyph of Renewing Mist will increase the range that Renewing Mist may travel by 20 yards, so a lot less position awareness. Um, then there is the Glyph of Surging Mist. If you're going to do any Crane Stance at all, this one's pretty much mandatory. 
Uh, when you're in Crane Stance, the Surging Mist no longer requires a target and instead will heal a random injured target within 40 yards. So it makes it a smart heal, which is really cool. You don't have to target, which is not what you want to be doing right now. Uh, when you're actually doing the, uh, when you're doing Crane Stance, you don't want to be targeting people. You just want to be smacking the boss. And the other one I have written down is... Soothing Mist. This one's pretty fun, actually. Uh, I don't use this one right now, but I may start in soon. And again, I don't have this one learned. I don't know what I'm doing here. All right. When you stop channeling Soothing Mist, you gain 60% movement speed for one second for every second you spend channeling Soothing Mist. So what this effectively means is you hit it, and after you're done soothing for six seconds, you're going to have six seconds of increased 60% movement speed. So you're going to be zipping all over the map, which is really cool if on fights like Bracken Spore, uh, when you're going to be healing that tank or healing the mushroom, and all of a sudden a fungal, uh, a mind fungus pops up right underneath you, and you need to book it you get 60% movement speed, boom. You're going to have it every time you need to move. So that one's really cool. Uh, so those are the kind of the four primary ones you're going to want to use. Um, all the other like secondary ones, we don't have a mandatory one in secondary. Just roll kind of whatever you want to do. So you see like I'm using water roll, spirit roll because I die a lot, and Zen Flight, which doesn't actually work in Warlord, so I should probably replace that. Um... All right. Any questions on glyphs? I have one. Uh, I just read it in the Mumble channel, but it's about stat waves. Okay. Oh, does the priority change if you prefer one stance over another? That is a, a good question. Um, Multi-strike is still going to be your biggest because uh, Multi-strike has that effect with Rising Sun Kick and Renewing Mists. Uh, and those are kind of your biggest generators on both sides. So you're going to want to use uh, multi-strike as your top. Um, as far as like crit versatility, I could see haste being a little bit more effective in crane stance because mana is not an issue with that. So I I would probably do that if uh, if I were staying crane stance a lot, or you know it's a fight that you're going to be in staying crane stance a lot. I would pump a lot more into haste. Uh, but keep kind of crit and versatility up there. You're going to need that spirit. Spirit, if you're staying crane stance, not very much needed. So if you know it's a fight or you severely outgear it, go ahead and dump spirit out, put some strong intellect uh, trinkets and rings and stuff like in that, uh, and that should bump you up a little bit more in your DPS. The problem is right now is at our gear levels, you're not going to spend a lot of time in crane stance. You're going to be bouncing in and out. There should be no fight where you don't go into crane stance a little bit, especially at the beginning. Crane Stance helps you, helps you book up your mana T stacks uh, really, really quickly. So you usually want to start the fight when there's not much going on in Crane Stance just to build up some mana T. And then you switch back over to Serpent. So Kargath is uh, the first fight in High Mall, and that one you get to spend a, quite a chunk of time in Serpent Stance because there's not a lot of damage going out at the first. So you get to spend a good chunk. So that might be one you want to kind of play around with those stats a little bit. Does that help out? All right. Okay, let's go over our talents. So, uh, tier 15. Um, th this is kind of a, a personal choice and also based on the encounter. Tiger's Lust can be extremely useful to get you out or get your teammates out. Know that you can place Tiger's Lust on teammates. So, really useful to kind of get you out, especially if there's any roots or snares, anything like that. Um, the only thing I would say mandatory on this tier is if you're taking Chi Torpedo at level 90, Take Celerity here, because that's going to give you three charges of Chi Torpedo. Uh, 30 Chi Wave is kind of your go-to. It's kind of your base, but um, Zen Sphere is actually mathematically more, but it requires a lot of awareness and uh, cooldown management, things like that. It takes more global cooldowns, so it more healing technically, but a lot harder to control, a lot harder to actually place because it's positional. So just kind of stick with Chi Wave. Chi Burst, there's a couple of fights. Uh, Butcher, in, for example, is one that Chi Burst actually has some really good potential because what that does is sends out a jet ahead of you, like a Hadouken. Um, and in Butcher, you're usually stacked in two stacks, two or three stacks. And if you aim it right, you can hit the boss and 
almost everybody in your party. And so use that on cooldown, and that can actually do a good chunk. So that's one fight I would probably take True Burst on, but for the most part, I, I go with Cheat Wave. 45, uh, don't use Ascension as a Mistweaver. It's really uh, handy in other ones, but all this is doing is kind of increasing your base mana pool, but you're going to go through your mana faster. And eh, it's not very good. Power Strikes, it, so really the choice is between Power Strikes and Chi Brew. Power Strikes will give you more Chi overall, but it's at a fixed rate. You'll get it when you use your, your generators, such as uh, Jab, Spinning Crane Kick, Expel Harm, Surging Mist. Instead of generating one, you'll generate two. So you get more overall, but Chi Brew gives you control. It will give you two Chi and a stack of mana T. Uh, and they increase the cooldown from 5.4 to 6.0. So it made it a little less attractive, but still, it there's something to be said about uh, knowing you need to uplift a lot and getting four chi uplift, uplift chi brew, chi brew, uplift, uplift, and getting just a mass amount of of AOE healing going out. There's something to be said for that. So if you need more control in a specific encounter, go with chi brew. Uh, sixty. Ooh, my mission finished. Uh, sixty. Um, charging ox wave. Leg Sweep, those are kind of your choices. Uh, Ring of Peace is much more of a uh, PvP talent now. Uh, it incapacitates enemies, usually isn't available on bosses, adds, things like that. Um, it's kind of AoE silent. So there's a couple of encounters maybe you'll want to use Ring of Peace, but for the most part, you're just going to want the, the stun, Charging Ox Wave, or Leg Sweep. Uh, 75, Diffuse Magic. Excellent. This is going to kind of be your base. You're going to want to use this most of the time. Uh, Diffuse Magic will reduce all damage or all magic damage taken by 90% and tra and remove all magic effects on you. So really useful as an additional dispel. On fights like the Butcher, though, when there's no magic damage going out, Dampen Harm is really, really handy. So Dampen Harm will uh, reduce the damage by 50% for the next three attacks that hit you for more than 15% of your health. So it halves the damage, which is really, really helpful. Um, the healing elixirs is kind of like the the switch between the two. It will auto-heal you when you use uh, any sort of brew. So uh, Thunder Focus T, uh, Elusive, or Energy, no, wrong ones. Fortifying Brew, I can never remember Fortifying Brew. Uh, Mana T, anytime you use that, it will kind of give you a heal. Uh, it can only happen once every 18 seconds, so it'll just kind of give you some healing over time. A lot more damage going out of this expansion. You usually not be at 100, so it has its place. But usually it's better to prevent damage than heal it. So try to go with a Diffuse Magic or Damage Harm. Level 90, this one, this is an interesting tier. Zhuan is kind of my go-to because um, it's a really powerful uh, cooldown. And especially if there are three plus enemies at a time you want to hit this because he does crazy amounts of cleave damage with his aoe lightning that goes off and all of that translates in eminence even if you are in serpent stance so it will do a, a good chunk of damage good chunk of healing and will let you kind of focus on other stuff while he's out there doing doing his magic now chi torpedo if you have a heavy f movement fight if you're moving from place to place to place this gives you free healing and especially if you take a celerity, you get three charges, you can zip back, forth, back, uh, and heal up your team teammates, do some damage at the same time. Rushing Jade Wind. Uh, really intriguing, because this one does a lot of healing. Also a lot of damage if it's an AoE fight. But it takes a huge amount of mana. So once if you have spirit in all of your your trinkets and neck and weapon and you're spirited up to the gill and you've got 20 stacks of monety, use it because it's going to do a lot. Um, fights like the butcher, if you can manage the mana, do it. If it's a stacked fight, you're healing, doing a lot of healing. So use that. Level 100. All right, this one is pretty darn easy. Pool of mists done. Um, <laughs> I there are no other times when you want to use anything else. Uh, so what Pool of Mist does is it will give you three charges of Renewing Mist and increases its healing by 15%. So you can blanket the raid 
like crazy. Remember, every time you cast that Renewing Mist, it has a chance to come off cooldown. So I've had it where I get to cast five times in a row Renewing Mist. And if you do Thunder Focus T, that increases it from three bounces to five. So all of a sudden you can have a full Mythic team blanket in Renewing Mists right off the bat. Rising Sun Kick also gets affected by this, has three charges, and its damage is increased by 50%. So it takes our biggest hit in Crane Stance and gives it another 50% and three charges. Really powerful. Uh, Breath of the Serpent, that, that one's pretty interesting. Um, let me go ahead and put that down, and we will see what that does. So it's positional. When you hit that, it's going to cast healing fire towards you so you position where it's going to go and it does it lasts for quite a while it does a good chunk of healing but i used it on butcher and it just wasn't keeping up with uh all the uh, the throughput i was getting with renewing mists renewing mist and uplift because when you have uplift on so many people or renewing mists on so many people you get to heal more people with renewing mists so i can't see a use because of the cooldown on this thing it's 1.5 minutes if this were a lower cooldown i would say probably maybe think about it but right now it's just pull a miss that's all there is to it now chi explosion uh this one is super super awesome for windwalker it has its uses for brewmaster no use whatsoever in mistweaver unless you're sitting in crane stance 100 percent of the time then at that point yeah go ahead chi explosion so as we get later in the tier, we get more and more gear, start playing around with this. Uh, it This one does a different effect based on how much money you have, but or how much chi you have, and it sucks all of your chi out. Uh, so, it, But it relies so heavily on healing spheres at 4 chi, and we've already gone over how healing spheres are kind of junk right now. So it's not very good at the moment. It's actually, in, if you're in crane stance... Chi Explosion is actually a DP, uh, heal per second loss based on your uplift and renewing mist. So don't just avoid it. But as time goes on, start playing around with it in Crane Stance can be a lot of fun. It's a fun effect. All right, and that uh, really about does it. Are there any other questions? I guess we still have to go over uh, enchants and gems. Um, multi strike, multi strike, multi strike. Done. Anything that gives you multi strike, go for it. Um, that that's about it. Multi strike is just so powerful for us right now that that's pretty much all you want to dump into. All right, and that that wraps it up. So unless there are any questions in Mumble, we'll go ahead and call it a wrap. Anything in Twitch? All right. There's oh, a uh, uh, yep. Go for it, Alia. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. So, it's kind of a simple question. I don't play a healing monk, but uh, I do play a monk that gets healed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I when I raid, I'm just curious what the outlook, without you being a you know, clairvoyant. I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. Balance. What was that? How does it look uh, going forward in the expansion as far as like healer balance? Mm. Mistweaver is in a really good spot. Um, there was a lot of concern regarding the lack of utility, uh, but then Crane Stance got buffed to the point where that actually is a utility, uh, and our Revival got buffed up so much that um, a lot of people want it, and our throughput is close to number one, if not number one. So, uh, for Mistweavers, we're looking okay. As for other healer balance, I um, I haven't really looked too much into them. But from what I'm hearing in the in the community, we're in a fairly decent spot. There's there everyone kind of has their own niche. Um, like Paladin is super awesome at tank healing, 
Uh, and Miss Weavers are kind of good at, at blanket healing, especially melee healing. Uh, shamans are good at stack healing. Um, and Rest of Druids are Rest of Druids. They're good at everything. So it's, uh, for the most part, I, I from what I understand, Druid is a little bit behind, but not to the point where you don't want to bring them. So I, I think as time goes on, Mistweaver is going to scale really well. Um, and I, I can't speak for scaling on other classes, but I, I feel Mistweaver is in a good spot now and is going to get even better. Did that, um, that sense in a good spot, did that happen in, during Siege of Orgrimmar? Or did they kind of cut back on the healing, uh, the healing Mistweaver monks? Um... Mistweaver in 5.4 was behind. Uh, it wasn't top top notch. They were still pretty good in throughput, but fist weaving wasn't really that viable uh, until near the end of the tier when 6.0 that patch hit. Then made it super viable because that the whole instance was laughable. Um, but it was really the inclusion, the the buffs that we've been getting in the last actually few weeks, the the buff to enveloping mist, the buff to life cocoon, buff to revival. Those things brought us from don't bring a mist weaver to oh my god, bring a mist weaver. Um, <laughs> because there was a, a huge part in the in the beta where people raid leaders were completely overlooking mist weavers because they were so low, didn't have a cooldown. Um, their AOE healing was so bad, but then it's just buff, buff, buff. Actually, I'm not even going to say buff, balance. They balanced us. And they brought us up where we were weak and brought other healers down where they were strong. Uh, except for they didn't nerf Disc enough because Disc is still really <laughs> good. <sighs> now, do you see that as far as the balancing the classes, maintaining? Because that, that kind of gives... Um people who do play tanks and even DPS uh, ba uh, maintaining that balance throughout the expansion you think they got a better handle on on that I think they've been done really good so far um, in tuning us around high mall and uh, so I I don't imagine that they're gonna get worse on that there they, they did pretty good at, at kind of keeping us even um, what we're gonna have to watch for is scaling on certain things as we get more and more gear, see if there's any sort of broken mechanics like there were with Windwalkers back in 5.2. Yeah, 5.2. Um, that's going to send someone a little too far above and beyond. Uh, absorbs. It, the, the healing model that they did made Absorbs a lot less powerful than they were, uh, and that made Mistweaver a lot more powerful. So as we progress and get to tier 18 and we get higher and higher gear, higher and higher stats, uh, our tank's going to continue to take the damage that they took now. Um, because if they do, if the, we still have that tank and that raid damage that's consistent, but not to the point where it insta-gibs you, and that's going to keep us strong with renewing miss and uplift. It's going to keep us going that way. But if we get to the point like we did in 5.4 where tanks are self-reliant on uh, using their heals and using uh, resolve, if, if they don't need healers anymore, we're going to be back to the same spot. Uh, so I, I think they've learned from that mistake, and I think they're going to be just fine going forward as in the scaling. Awesome. Thank you for answering that. Not a problem. Suk uh, asked in Mumble, is it possible to stay in Crane Stance exclusively, and could you fist weave raid heal? That is an excellent question. It is definitely possible if you are have a lot of other healers. Um, the nice thing about Mistweaver is you are a 0.5 of a heal and 0.5 of a DPS, and they got that, that balance pretty darn well. Uh, so if you have too much healing at five healers but not enough healing at four healers you could go crane stance the whole time but your instincts are going to tell you not to because if you see a whole bunch of black on those bars a whole bunch of missing health your instinct is going to be renewing missed all the things so while it is possible probably not likely until we get later and later once we you know people have geared out 
uh, in Mythic gear and they're coming back and running heroics or normals, then yeah, definitely. I I did uh, LFR yesterday, and that one's such a joke that I was in Crane's Dance pretty much the whole time except for in Brackenspore. So it's not designed to be that way. It's designed to give you a baseline and then a punch. Like, Crane Stance is your, this is kind of my baseline thing, get some monety going, do some damage, and then, oh crap, people are starting to die, let's get, let's get power mode going. So you pull out Serpent Stance. Alright, any other questions in the uh, dojo on Twitch or on Mumble and CTR? I got one more. Sure. Actually, if you switch between the two without changing your gearing strategy, very stats you go for. Like, can you pretty much gear up as a Mistweaver monk and then, you know, know when to use fist weaving and when to use um, Mistweaving? You know, yeah. Um, yeah. If you kind of gear up with a with the multi strike crit versatility. And kind of avoid haste and multi or haste and mastery. Uh, you're going to be fine going back and forth between the two. Um, if you're going to be dancing a lot, then stance dancing, dancing between the stances. Um, stick with pool of mists, absolutely. And I'm going to change that back before I forget because I don't want to go into my next raid and go like, oh, why is my statue breathing fire? Um, so yeah, switch to pool of mists, and that one helps you when you come out. You can blank the mist and in. Uh, in Renewing Mist, which is really handy. So you don't... If you know that you're going to be in Crane Stance the whole time, for some reason, like your guild is just that awesome, then, yeah, probably uh, start banking on haste a little bit more. But if you're going to be in Crane Stance the whole time, you're probably better off bringing a Windwalker um, than you are keeping that .5 heal. You're going to get more damage and more oomph out of that. Yeah, I was mostly asking just for the appealing, if the monk is able to do both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, obviously, played by a player who plays that that style very well and able to play both styles. Um, yep. yeah, it's just that's much more appealing for raids to start bringing some uh, misweaving monks. Who are also capable of, of fist weaving too when it's you know when it's appropriate, right? But yeah. not having to change you know switch to a whole separate gear set is also appealing. Yeah, as most of the time you're not going to have the option of staying in one or the other. Uh, as we're starting out here, it's going to be mainly, I would say probably about seventy percent of the time or higher, seventy or eighty percent of the time you're going to be in serpent and twenty percent of the time in crane. Uh, anytime knowing when you can switch into crane and not put your raid in danger is one of the top skills of a good mistweaver knowing those times uh knowing the encounter and knowing when you are going to have that downtime uh cargath is a good example the very first uh part of that inst of that encounter very little raid damage going out so that's when you want to pump into crane stance do some damage and then as soon as the damage starts coming out pop out so knowing those fights and knowing when you can is going to be separate between a good Mistweaver and a mediocre one. Awesome. Thanks again. Not a problem. Uh, Sir Meatwad in the dojo asks, is there a video guide I recommend? Um, I don't have one off the top of my head. Uh, I'll be posting, the, posting this on uh, Twitch later, though, so uh, I'm probably on YouTube, so this one. <laughs> All right, if there's no other questions, we're going to close this up. All right, I want to thank everyone for coming out to the Mistweaver Boot Camp for the Convert to Raid Guild. That's convertoraid.com slash guild. Uh, you can check out my stuff at monkmeditation.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at monk underscore meditation and watch the podcast, Monk Meditation. Uh, you can catch that on Twitch, on YouTube, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, all that fun stuff. Uh, and so we, we talk about tips, tricks, uh, general monk community discussion, things like that. Uh, so if you like that kind of content, uh, check us out. <laughs>